Toussaint Louverture was a very determined man. He was a very ambitious man. And in my opinion, he was a genius. Toussaint is, I think, uh, one of the most incredible figures that I know about him in, in many ways. He's born on a plantation in Saint-Domingue. He grows up on that plantation. That plantation was owned by a man who was tolerant for the times. Toussaint was taught to read and write as a child. He eventually occupies a, a somewhat privileged role, if you can say that on a plantation, as, as a coachman and, and has a kind of relationship with the managers and masters in some ways. He becomes free in the 1770s. So he's somebody who kind of occupied different roles in society. And I think that's the key for understanding Toussaint, is that he saw possibilities where other people didn't. He had businesses, had contacts in the US and elsewhere, bank accounts, managed his affairs pretty well. The man was endless in organizational capacity. I mean, he would have been a fantastic CEO today. Toussaint didn't record his first reactions to the revolution in France, but his fellow free Saint-Domingans, the white colonials, and the mixed race population were transfixed. In 1789, there were about 40,000 white people and about 30,000 colored people who were, of course, their sons and cousins and so on and so forth, who were landowners themselves, many of them, slave owners themselves, many of them, very effective businessmen, many of them, involved romantically with the white master class. One of the things that's important to remember about Haiti and race is it wasn't simply black and white. Instead, you had numerous gradations of color. One historian went so far as to give 110 categories of color from absolute black to absolute white. And to each combination, he gave a name, mulatto, quadroon, mamaluke, and what he was accounting for was the drops of black blood. Whites hoped for more control over the colony's governance, but the colony's mixed race population hoped for more fundamental changes. They had been born free, but not equal. They had to show physical respect for the white stand up when they are in presence of a white, call them Mr. or whatever title they wanted to have. It was not easy for them, and that's exactly why they were the first one, before the blacks, they were the first one to ask for equality. The mixed-race population of Saint-Domingue decided their chance had come in 1791. They sent a petition to France's new government asking for the rights of citizenship. This was a powerful message to have been taking place in a society that was explicitly organized on inequality. It's like dynamite. The petition asked for civil protections and it enraged the island's white population. Working-class colonists began a full-scale intimidation campaign. They threatened, beat, and murdered mixed-race residents in the capital. But the petition met a different reception back in Paris. The new breed of delegates in the National Assembly issued a landmark decree. They extended equal rights to the small population of mixed-race people born of two free parents. 